Today we're beginning a brand new sermon series called Summer at St. John the Divine. And every single week we're going to cover a different topic with the intent of hopefully motivating you and encouraging you and inspiring you. And today I want to kick it off by doing a topic that I honestly would have done next Sunday. Many of you know that next Sunday is one of the major holidays of the entire year, Father's Day. <laughs> and because it's Father's Day, it is also Pentecost. On that day of Pentecost, it's two major, major days, major holidays. And obviously Pentecost supersedes all other holidays. And because of that, I thought it'd be great to give you what I would traditionally give on a Father's Day sermon to give it to you today. And so the message today is not just for the men of our church. It's for all people in our church. And I want to talk to you today about what it means to be a leader. God has a vision for you as men to lead your family with good Christian values. He has a dream for all of you as men and as women that you would read to your children the Bible, that you would guide them in their walk of faith, that you would bring them to church. God has a dream for a few good men to be true leaders in this world. But you have to know, church family, that we live in a world that just because God tells you to be a leader on this world, that the devil is always telling you, you don't need to be one of his followers, be one of my followers. Surrender your role as a dad and as a man, as a woman and as a mother, surrender it to the world and let the world lead you and it's working. In the male psyche, it is generally believed that most men, when it comes to faith, are generally in one of two categories, the way men think. One is passivity. They're very passive. Honey, you take the children to church. You read the Bible to them. You guide them. You, you bring them to Sunday school. You take care of that. And for many men today, they have, ad, they have simply surrendered their role as a father. And let me show you how it looks statistically. Between men and women, men by far, almost two to one, are leaving Christianity over women. On a typical Sunday morning in Christianity across America, 65% 60, of women traditionally attend, and only 35% of men attend. This is across the board. We can see it even in Europe today and around the world. There are more women who attend church than there are men. We also see that one of the greatest influences in a child's life, if you want to know how your children are going to grow up in Christ, being part of a church, a growing community, don't look to the mom. It is the dad that overwhelmingly overwhelmingly influences the life of a child in their walk of faith. That's one psyche, is the passivity. You take care of it, honey. That's your job. The other is superiority. Superiority tells us, I'm the man, I'm the leader. What I say, it goes. It's this very dictatorial, I'm going to preach, preach, preach. And what we know in this uh, as well is that this does not work. And can I just give you a word of encouragement to the men and to the women today? I think God is telling all of us, do your job. Stop letting someone or something do a job that God has called all of you to do. Stop letting the world lead your children. You lead your children. I want you to open up your Bibles to the book of Thessalonians. Here Paul is talking to the people of Thessaloniki and he's telling them, we're on page 276 in your yellow Bibles. If you want to, you can just simply listen to what I'm going to share. But if you want to open up your Bibles, it's page 276, 1 Thessalonians chapter 2. We're going to pick it up at verse 11. And Paul, again, page 276, chapter 2, verses 11. Paul is talking about what it means to be a dad to be a father. And in many ways, he's giving all of you a job description, men and women alike. But listen to what he says to the men. You know that we treated each one of you 
as a father should treat his children. And then he goes on to how that should look. That a father should be one who encourages, who comforts, who keeps urging you, listen to this kind of life, to live a life that pleases God. Listen to me, church family. The world has a description for you as dads. He has a way of telling you how it looks like to be a father. The caveat here is what it means to be a father is to live a life and to encourage your children to live a life that pleases God. Would we as men, as dads, as mothers, as fathers, would we pass the test of leading our children, our family, to what is pleasing to God? So what do we do about it? What do we do about it as men and as fathers and as mothers? I think we need to make three promises, every one of us, men and women, senior and young alike today. Here are three promises I'm encouraging all of you to make today. Here's number one. I want you to promise to have people in your life that hold you accountable. Women are very good at this. Us men, we struggle at this. Women can hold a conversation, and I say this respectfully, but they have no problem sharing how they feel, how they, what's going on in their insides. Uh, they always have, they have an opportunity to kind of share uh, what their struggles are, what their husband did or, or didn't do. But they have, a, all, they have a very easy time or an easier time than men. Why? Because for a lot of us men, we look at it as a weakness. We wear this label as some level of weakness when we open up our hearts. And for many of us, listen to me, men, you're the only leader you're following. You're the only voice you're listening to. And you need to have people in your life that says, don't go that way, go this way. I want to be very open and transparent with all of you. You know me as a priest. I'm a son of this community. Been here for 13 years almost as the priest. When I first got ordained 13 years ago, we were going through a lot of division and, and struggles and challenges in our church. Many of you that were part of the church at that time will remember this. And I knew for me, in my own mind, that I had to do a lot to try to keep the church together. I needed to do a lot to bring people closer to Christ, to keep our community focused. Listen to me, it was one of the strong, one of the most difficult times in my life. I actually developed alopecia during that time, an autoimmune disease that allows your hair to fall out. Now there's no excuse, but back then, I did have a full set of, and had a hair. But the point I'm trying to make to you is that there were days, listen to me, men, days that I would not be praying, that I would go a couple of days and be out there preaching and teaching, but I myself wasn't spending time alone with God. God, what are you trying to speak to me? How do I need to live my life? And I wanted to encourage all of you that for me as a priest, I needed someone to hold me accountable. I have a very good friend of mine who's a priest who's probably tuning in, lives on the West Coast, that I called at that time 13 years ago. I said, listen, Father, I'm struggling. Like I have no finish line in my work. There's always work to do. How do I set aside time for me to pray? Because I'm going days without praying. He said, Nick, what are you doing tomorrow morning at 6 o'clock? I said, I, would, I was going to be sleeping, but that may be changing right now. And so he says, no, 6 o'clock tomorrow morning, we're going to get up and pray. And for the next 21 days, he prayed with me at 6 in the morning, this other priest. It was actually 3 o'clock in the morning for him. He's on the West Coast. Every single morning, sometimes I'd be late, he'd keep calling me, let's get up, time to go and pray. That, having that person hold me accountable to this day, at six o'clock in the morning, if you called the low house, I'm praying for myself, for you, for my family. It is someone that held me accountable, and now it's part of my routine. It takes 21 days to have a routine in your life. To you, the men, Who's holding you accountable? Are you the only voice you're listening to in your life? Are you the only person who's guiding you in your walk of faith? Can I just give you a word of encouragement? Put me on the list. Let me be one of those people that holds you accountable. But find some other people where you can simply take off the mask and say, you know what? I need some help with this issue. 
Here's number two. Another promise that all men and really all of us should make is I'm going to promise to work hard for my family. Listen to me, church family. You do not find a good marriage. You build one. You don't find a good family. You have to build one. And one of the greatest desires of the devil is to put your family in his trophy case. And there are countless marriages, even right now, that are struggling because the men need to take on a leadership role in that house. And can I just tell you that almost from the book of Genesis to the last book of the book of Revelation, almost every single time when God is speaking to his people about how to raise a child, he does not speak to the mother. He speaks to the dad. He speaks to the father. In the book of Ephesians, chapter 6, verses 4, he says, Fathers, stop it. Stop provoking your children to be angry. But raise them, raise them in the teachings, not of the world, of God. Raise them in the teachings of God. And I just want to encourage all of you, you as dads, take some time today to read the Bible. And then maybe send a little Bible verse to your your children, maybe they're older, and you just maybe send a text message to say, hey, listen, this is a Bible verse for today. Or maybe you just tell your daughter in the morning tomorrow, hey, listen, honey, I know this sounds crazy, but that priest on Sunday gave a message that honestly provoked me, and so here I'm sending you, I'm letting you know that I'm praying for you this morning. It just is a way that you are telling them, I'm going to lead you closer to Christ. Here's number three. We promise to have an accountability partner, someone that holds us accountable. We promise to put our families first. And the last one, which really should be number one, is we promise, we promise to draw closer to God. How can we as men, young and old alike, how can we know what it means to be a good father if we're not spending time with our Heavenly Father? if we're not spending time with prayer. And so I'm just encouraging you tonight, when you say your prayers, you as the men, but yes, you as the women, that when you're reading a Bible verse, don't read it just for knowledge. God does not care about how much you know about the Bible. He wants you to live it. So that when you're reading it, you're not simply going, oh, I can use this later on for someone else. But that when you're reading it, you're asking yourself this question, God, what are you teaching me now? What are you trying to tell me now? I need to live a different life. I leave you with this. In every single sacrament in the Orthodox Church, every one of them, I love our Orthodox Church on so many levels. When you have a church that's 2,000 years old, you have a church that's a tree with very deep roots. And in every single sacrament, at the end of every sacrament, the priest gives the person who's receiving that sacrament a vision statement, a mission for them to live by. Take, for example, we had this morning, we had a confession. The last prayer that the priest says over the person who just took confession is this line, having no cares for the mistakes that you've been making, go, go and follow the ways of the Lord. It's a mission statement that the last thing that that person hears is what they're called to live by. Go your way, following in the ways of the Lord. At a baptism, when a child is baptized, all of the congregation hears this gospel lesson. Go now and make disciples of all people, teaching them about Christ. Go. And at a marriage service, many of you may not even remember this, because you may have been just so glued to your wife or your spouse or your husband. But at the very end of the service, the priest puts his hand on the groom first, looks the groom in the eye, and he says this prayer, his mission statement. He says, and now you, O groom, be magnified. One translation says, be exalted, be lifted up, be encouraged, like Abraham Isaac and Jacob. Who are these people? Abraham is the father of our faith. He's considered as one of the greatest fathers on earth. You know who his son is? Isaac 
who was also a great dad, a great father, who's Isaac's son, Jacob. He says, be exalted. Use these people, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Use them as examples. And then he gives the final statement. The priest looks at that groom first and he says, be exalted like Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and now go. And he looks over to him and he says, follow God. Follow the commandments of God. And I'm giving all of you that message today. That's your mission statement, whether you're men, women, dads, or just single people, but you're just a message that go your way and be a leader. I'm encouraging you all to go out today and make some promises. I promise that I'm going to have someone that calls me out. Just as, just as it doesn't tell me what I want to hear, but what I need to hear. I promise I'm going to have someone in my life that's going to make me better. I promise I'm going to work harder for my family. I don't want my family to be a trophy in the devil's trophy case. And I promise I am going to draw closer to God. Don't let anyone or anything do your job. God is looking for a few good men. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen.